Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going back to the Red Hat and the GPL story. There's been quite a few developments, and so there's some things we really should talk about, and so catch you up on what's been going on in case you haven't been watching the events as they unfold. Also, I want to talk about some of the comments that I've gotten on the previous video and some of the uh, questions that those comments uh, uh, brought forward and see if we can't answer them or, or shed some light on them. Let's take a look at, first of all, uh, there's been, as you know, the first posting by Red Hat talked about the fact that they were going to remove the CentOS repository for uh, the source, and so the package sources would no longer be available publicly. And then a second post that clarified that the only people who pay for subscriptions to a RHEL release would have access to the source RPMs. And if you got caught, according to the uh, terms of service and the license agreement for the subscription, that your subscription would be dropped or terminated uh, if you were caught distributing any of the SRPMs. Uh, now, they talked originally about going to get uh, the actual uh, public sources that are used to build RHEL from CentOS streams, but in the last video, as you probably recall, we tested that, and it's not really suitable uh, in order to be able to get an exact match between the source code and what is actually in RHEL. So that, that is what has transpired. And since that time, uh, the, the, uh, the distros that are basic clones of RHEL, and that would be Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, Oracle Linux, and Euro Linux. And so I have not heard anything from Euro Linux as to what their plans are. Alma Linux published two articles so far on their blog. So in the first uh, article, this is the second one, but in the first article, Alma Linux was still trying to sort things out, figure out what they were planning to do. But Benny Vasquez uh, published this article uh, just shortly after the first one. And, and I, you know, I don't think they're too far along in their process yet. But they did invite the community to participate with them in the discussions uh, in order to uh, plan out a way forward for Alma Linux. But in the meantime, they've had a number of questions here uh, as to what they plan to do. So will they still get security fixes? The answer is yes. Uh, they'll be pulling from the CentOS stream repositories uh, and also from the Oracle Linux repos uh, updates in order to get the security fixes that they need for the current release of Alma Linux. Also, they they have a distro, uh, excuse me, a discourse set up that people can join from the community and participate in the discussions uh, with Alma Linux and the contributors. So can they just use the CentOS stream sources? Their conclusion is no, and that's mine as well. It's not suitable uh, to, to use the CentOS stream resources because they are upstream from RHEL. And they say the same thing. It's because they're upstream from RHEL, and they won't include the patches that RHEL provides for uh, the Red Hat team provides for RHEL. They don't backport those necessarily up into CentOS. The last question is Red Hat trying to kill downstream clones. Well, I don't think Allman Linux knows. I don't think any of us directly knows unless we're a participant with, with Red Hat in their internal discussions. And so none of us can, we can only speculate as to what the intent of Red Hat is. But clearly, it does not bode well for the community as a whole. Having looked at the at Alma Linux uh, posts, let's move over to Rocky. So Rocky had a, a couple of posts as well. The first one was, 
yeah, again, we're going to look at this and see what we can do. There were assurances in the first post that, hey, Rocky Linux had taken steps when they initially formed their distribution to not be so dependent upon single sources for their release. The second post that Rocky made, I think it was right at the end of June, and let's just go look at that. So Rocky Linux back um, just around the end of June posted this uh, to their their news uh, section on their site, where and basically they're talking about you know that uh, they feel that every user of Rocky Linux is a valued and 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 their contributions matter. So they have prioritized how they want to kind of go about this. The status update is they wanted to take the time to thoroughly evaluate their uh, their alternatives on where they might be able to uh, draw from sources that would allow them to not only release uh, a current version of Rocky Linux based on RHEL, but also to be able to manage the patches and security updates that are performed uh, with RHEL. So one of the options that they are exploring is that, is that Red Hat provides a UBI container, which is normally used uh, in Docker containers, for example. Uh, they're also used in Podman as well. They said they have they validated this through the OCI container initiative, and it works like they expected. Uh, there's also uh, another method they can leverage, which is a pay per use public cloud instances of RHEL that allows customers to spin out uh, RHEL releases. I think. Uh, so I think Rocky Linux has a pretty good way forward for now. I don't know what Red Hat will plan to do down the road. That's always hard to predict. Uh, and we'll just have to wait and see on how this shakes out further on down the road. One of the other comments I made in the video had to do with SUSE. And my concern over there didn't seem to have been any movement to talk about OpenSUSE and what they had planned to do with that. Well, one of the founders and uh, came out with a blog post. Uh, and so let's go look at that and see what they're planning to do. One of the founders of SUSE uh, published a blog post uh, also on June the 29th. That would be Dr. Thomas uh, D. Giacomo. And he said that Red Hat last week made a substantial shift in its source code access policy. The implications for vendors, developers, and users are significant. And the move has caused some concern within the open source community. And basically what he describes what happened and that SUSE is, is uh, upholding their original principles and their support for open source. So they have recommitted providing across all of their platforms uh, support with OpenSUSE, which of course is the one version of, of uh, SUSE Linux that you can get for free. Uh, also their new adaptable Linux platform and uh, the SUSE Linux Enterprise. He also talked about um, a solution for people that are wanting to manage heterogeneous environments using CentOS and RHEL. Uh, they have SUSE Liberty uh, Linux, uh, and they, I, be I believe that is a paid program, paid support. So, and that is a, a supposed to be a seamless experience for uh, RHEL customers. So, uh, and it won't change the way that they approach um, their uh, Red Hat, uh, their, uh, their support for open source. So that's good to hear. My concern was in my last video that there did not seem to be any communication. And so the community, of course, when there's silence, starts to invent things. And uh, it's good to see that they have recommitted to their foundations. 
the last one was Oracle. And Oracle just replied uh, at the time I'm making this video today. And <laughs> they have rather a humorous post. Uh, let's go take a look at that. <laughs> they funny that they're they're not referring to uh, Red Hat as Red Hat. They're referring to them as IBM. So this one, uh, this is a, a note that we came from. This is a quote from uh, the 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 Red Hat post that says, "At Red Hat, thousands of people spend their time writing code to enable new fixes, bug fixes, and generating different packages, and then." Supporting that work for a long time, we have to pay people to do that work. IBM doesn't want to continue to publicly release RHEL source code because it has to pay its engineers. That seems odd. I mean, they used to pay their engineers and release publicly, uh, publicly available RHEL code years before IBM acquired them in 2019. And they make a, a point of this $34 billion. If you go out and you read any market data that's current, like in the last quarter and the last year, uh, any any time after the purchase of Red Hat, you'll see that IBM is struggling to pay down that debt. The blog goes on to mention CentOS. It was a very popular free rel uh, compatible distribution. In December of 2020, IBM effectively killed it. Here we go. We're talking about uh, IBM again as an alternative to RHEL. As and then two alternatives sprung up: Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, and of course them. They also left out Euro Linux, which is another one. Uh, so, and perhaps its real answer to the question is why eliminate the competitor? They think it's to eliminate the competitors. And the reason is more opportunities for revenue for IBM. By the way, if, if you're a Linux dis a developer who disagrees with IBM's actions and you believe in Linux freedom the way we do, we're hiring. So one observation, uh, IBM's actions are not in your best interest. By killing CentOS as a rel alternative and attacking Alma and Rocky Linux, IBM is eliminating one way your customers save money and make larger share of their wallet available to you. Right, uh, because if you're spending money on the support of your software, that's money you can't invest elsewhere in your business. Finally, to IBM, here's a big idea for you. Say you don't want to pay all those rel developers. Well, here's how you can save money. Uh, just pull from us. We and become a downstream distributor of Oracle Linux. We'll be happy to take on that burden. So we've looked at Oracle and their their, their kind of a, a humorous approach to looking at this, uh, and it kind of you know a lot of people say that uh, Oracle doesn't contribute back to the open source community. They most certainly do. Uh, they do provide uh, support for the Linux kernel and do make changes on a regular basis to that. They also contribute a number of open source packages to the Linux community. So uh, it's, it's not right to think about them as being, we're just here to take all and give nothing back. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not very trustful of Oracle, but uh, because having dealt with them in the past with their licensing for their databases and some of the other systems that they built, it's good to see that another uh, company is stepping up to support the open source community. More importantly, they pointed out the GPL uh, licensing within Linux and the Linux distributions and the associated packages that go along with that. One thing, one thing that I, I will say that I had my license for, I have a developer's license for RHEL expired on the 5th of July. And previous, I've had that license for a number of years. In the past, all I've had to do was renew it. Well, this year I went, I went and I saw that it was getting ready to expire. So I hit the renew button. And then a couple days later, I get a message back from customer service that says, uh, sorry, but uh, renewing doesn't, you can't renew. Now, if you want to use the renewal, we have these options for you to go buy a, a subscription, an annual subscription to the license, and then you can then use the renewal button. But for you, you're going to have to wait until your license completely expires, and uh, and then 
you can uh, come back to the developer site and follow the steps to get a new license. Uh, I want to show you the steps in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, renewing a developer license. You put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your whole self in, and you turn yourself about. You do the hokey pokey, you give a little shout. That's what it's all about. Yeah, okay, so maybe that was a little silly, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of steps to go through. That's all I had for today. I want to thank my Patreons and my uh, channel members. Thank you so much for your contributions to the channel. I want to thank all of you that got this far in the video. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, Oracle's uh, reply was probably, they win the prize for the funniest statements. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.